Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to cover, this will be a part one of working with subframe selector. And it will specifically be on setting up the system parameters so that you get the proper numbers based on your telescope and camera combination. When you first come into subframe selector, the default settings I believe are one and one for scale and gain. Sometimes this camera resolution might not even be set to 16 bit. So this set of subs came from my Gran Turismo 81 with a 1600mm Pro. The measurements I like to use are full width, half max, and stars. There's a wide range of values here. I need the scale to be the same as the scale when I shot. In Nina, the full width, half maximum is captured on screen. You can see that value as you shoot, determine things are getting better or worse. In order to use this same scale, need to adjust subframe scale not so much camera gain it's not going to change this the scale over here but i still set the camera gain for other measurements in here so how do we do this there's a little bit of a journey so let's let's go through it there's a little bit of math nothing to be afraid of i've laid it out on my little chalkboard here all right so the first thing we need to know which telescope we're using what its native focal length is its aperture and if you're using a reducer slash flattener, what is the multiplier ratio for that? So how do we find these initial numbers for your telescope? So you can go to the specification sheet if you have it. In this case, say I can go to the website for William Optics, look up the telescope. I found the exact model. Here's the focal length and the diameter. I also know my reducer is 0.8. This is the reducer I'm using. Gather those numbers for your telescope. The next thing we need to do is determine the focal ratio, which is gonna be the focal length divided by the aperture. Now there's a site we can use for this, a site we can use right here. It's gonna do this calculation for you, astronomy.tools, and the calculator you want for this is the focal length ratio. You can put the 478 in here, the 81 in, and it's going to kick out the same number as if you punched it in the calculator. So we'll do it real quick. 478 divided by 81, same number, 5.9. Now, if you don't have a flattener or reducer, then that's the number you're going to use. If you have a reducer and it's not a 1x, then you'll need to multiply the native focal ratio by the reducer to get a modified focal ratio with reducer. So if I multiply this times 0.8, I get 4.72. The next thing we want to do is calculate our modified focal length with reducer. This would be the aperture, 81, times the focal ratio, 4.72. 81 times 4.72 is 382. So native 478 with reducer 382. We need to keep track of this number. So we'll come back to that. We'll park that for a second. Next thing we want to do is determine our camera pixel resolution in arc seconds. So the pixel size for the, the 1600mm Pro, if I do a Google search for it, it'll come up. You can see it right here, 3.8 micrometers. So take that number, set it aside. You can actually calculate this on the Astronomy Tools site if you don't know it by knowing some of the parameters like the horizontal and vertical size of the pixels in millimeters and the resolution in pixels. And it will determine the size for you. It'll give you this 3.8. All right, so pixel size for the calculator divided by focal length. Go back to the calculator. This is going to be three, the 3.8 divided by 382 gives us this number times 206.265. This is a defined constant. I'm not going to explain what the constant is. It's just a known constant to determine the arc seconds per pixels. Mine is 2.05 in some trailer. I use 2.05. Now gain, which is not really needed for the full width half maximum settings, but I put it into subframe selector in case I run into other values that utilize it. But in order to determine gain for the camera, you're going to go to the specifications again so this is generally found on dwo site for this camera you can find it find usually find this chart so the one we're looking for is right here this gain per adu 
So I run at unit, it's called Unity Gain right here where the arrow is. 139 is the setting in the, you put into Nina or other capture software. In order to get to, if you go across to this gain number vertically, which is one, it's technically 1.0011 from another calculation I found, but one is good enough. Just round it to one, and now you have your gain. If, for example, I were looking at my 132, which is also a Williams Optics Telescope, then the unity gain on this is 100. And on this chart right here, you can see the 100 down here, clear down here, that says 100, comes up to this gain ADU. This is equal to 0 0.25. So I would use 0 0.25 if I were plugging in game for the 132. Now we're going to come back to subframe selector. Subframe scale, arc sextants per pixel. That is going to be 2.05. Now watch the scale when I hit this. Scale completely changes, right? Now it's reality. Those subs are nowhere near as good as they originally looked like on full width half max. I also plug in here in case this needed elsewhere. My my camera game, I could leave it at one. It's like, it's close enough. I make sure I'm at the proper camera resolution and the rest of this is by default. At this point, let me reduce this for a second. You could drag off these settings and make them a workflow item. And I'm gonna show how to build a whole workflow project template in another video. But for now, you could call this your subframe selector process you could also in here go into the description hit this edit you can say gt81 with 0.8x and let's put in 1600 mm pro now you have a note in there to tell you the setup what it was made for this will be a building block for a workflow video i do in later time so another reason I like to have my subframe scale correct, not only when I call the frames, I can have an understanding of how these compare to previous shoots and where I want to cut off saving them. I can also go over here and hit the CSV output and save the output, which I've already done here. And it might take a little while for it to write that out. Once it's done in Excel, you can open up the file and I can use this to calculate average with half maximums by filter. I log some of this information in my shoot log. I can keep track of you know, things getting better or worse with my rig setups. If there's going to be filters that change over time, do I need to rerun my offsets? You can change this to a regular number and see the number there. Get averages or filters so that so that's very useful. There's star counts. There's a lot of different information in here that you could utilize. That is all for this part. We'll cover the subframe selector calling, D-U-L-L-I-N-G method I utilize. There's several ways you can go with that. I might give some advice on that based on what I've seen others do. But until next time, subscribe if you like this video. Watch some of my other videos. It really help grow the channel. Until next time, take care.